Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric, back again with another video, and today we are talking about our passive solar house. In this video, you are going to see the complete design, and I'm also gonna talk about why we chose to design the house the way we chose to design it, and you're gonna to get to see footage from the lot where we started clearing trees. There's a lot of trees that need to be cleared for the house site and the septic. This is gonna be a first in a passive solar house build series that we're doing, so stay tuned and make sure you hit that subscribe button to see future videos on this passive solar house build. So unfortunately, in order to build a house here on this wooded lot, we do have to remove almost all these trees because a driveway has to be cut in and also a lot of machinery has to get in in order to build this house. Now you can see on the site plan just how far down we have to go the hill because of the septic field that actually goes past where the actual house site is. The house site is only about 50 feet from the road, which is where most of this video is taken. Now, unfortunately, a lot of wildlife is going to get disturbed because this is a more rural area where a lot of wildlife is located. Now, keep in mind, part of our plan is to incorporate a lot of landscaping into the design around the home and around the septic field as well, where a lot of this trees and everything like that were removed. So some of this greenery shrubbery will come back. Now this is the first time we're building the house from the ground up and it took a long time and there's a lot of paperwork that needs to get done. First of which is the land disturbing permit which allows you to, like it says, disturb the land. And once we got that, which took several weeks and lots of hoops and jumps, we were able to actually get a skid steer in here and start clearing out and kind of mapping out what needed to be taken down and where the location of a lot of the items were. Now, that actually was really challenging, definitely because of the slope of the lot. If you can see here, I'm standing down near the bottom of where we're gonna clear, looking up towards the road, and it is pretty steep. So it makes it really challenging to get a excavator down the hill in order to clear out these trees, and then you have to drag all the trees up in order to kind of clean up the lot. So not only do you have to take the trees down safely, but you also have to clean all the debris up. All that to say, if you guys plan on doing your own house builds at some point, just keep in mind patience is key and rushing your builder or rushing your contractor who's clearing your lot for you isn't gonna speed the process up because this stuff just takes a long time and you can run into issues with broken equipment that will just make the process even longer. Now, of course, each house site is different, but in our case, it is a downward sloping lot, so we had to bring in a ton of dirt to build in a driveway. And so boulders were actually built underneath this and on the side to hold all this dirt in. Now, of course, the driveway is really important as one of the first things to go in, because without it, we can't get any like cement trucks or anything like that in there to you know pour footings for the foundation so you can see here a nice wide beginnings of a driveway that is just a ton of dirt that we got dumped and this is a really important part and a really important step in the process because without this then no other trucks would be able to get down there and the process would halt so you're definitely if you have a downward sloping lot going to need to have a lot of patience in order to have a lot of dirt dumped and compacted and properly built with boulders backing up all this dirt so it doesn't just kind of get washed down the hill.
Now my kids absolutely loved this part of the project because it had the most trucks and most activity going on, most movement, and they just loved it. And so we brought them out there every chance that we got and they just loved all the big heavy machinery and loved seeing the huge change that happened uh, when you do remove the trees and add that ton of dirt and it really opens things up to what the final view is really going to look like. So now let's take a look at the final view. All the clearing has been completed and we're ready to move on to the next step. But before we do that, I'm definitely gonna walk you guys through the entire design of the house. So here is the before picture, if you remember from the beginning of the video, and here is what it looks like after. And it is such a huge difference, such a huge change, but we still have a long way to go. Now let's jump into the design of the house. And I'm gonna do a complete walkthrough with you guys on the design portion. So this is a passive solar house and the house is designed to take advantage of the repetitive nature of the sun. There is no solar panels in a passive solar house. It's just using the sun in a smart way. So there's a couple of things that a passive solar house needs. One is shading to block the sun during the summer and allow the sun to enter through glass on the south facing side in the northern hemisphere during the winter months when you want that heat to come in. You also need a thermal mass. In our case, we're using a slab on grade construction, meaning that the slab or the concrete floor is going to be the finished floor. And so that's gonna allow the sun to heat that up during the winter. And also during the summer months, it's gonna feel a lot cooler. So here is our design. This is the back of the house that faces the view and you can see it's a lot of glass with the open to a deck. Now this is a solar study that our architect did. So this is high noon in the middle of summer and you can see that the overhang that we have on our roof line that is over all that glass actually blocks the sun from entering the building. So you can see in our design we actually have a four foot overhang that you can see above the deck that will block the sunlight during the summer months. And so that size of your overhang is dependent on where you are located on the earth. And there's so many designs that you guys can choose from. I mean, there really is an endless possibility. But the biggest thing to remember is that it's just all about blocking the sun during the summer and allowing the sun to enter through either windows or glass doors during the winter months. Now in contrast, here is winter. So this is December 21st at high noon and you can see there's actually about 15 feet of entry. So the sunlight is gonna enter into the structure about 15 feet through those sliding glass doors and the windows above them. So this allows that sunlight to naturally heat the space just through the sun's repetitive nature. So day in and day out, the sunlight is going to heat the space. Now what it also is gonna do is heat that thermal mass. That's why it's important. So after the sun goes down, that thermal mass will continue to radiate the heat above, making the living conditions really comfortable. So that is it. That is the in-house. Pretty small, about 2,100 square feet. But this here, this what you're looking at, is the most important part of the design, which is that back overhang, overhanging the deck, which allows us to be a passive solar structure, along with a lot of other elements that are gonna come later in the build, like insulation. Just scratching the surface here on this passive solar house build, a lot more videos to come in this passive solar house video series. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for watching. Share this video with a friend and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, I'll see you in the next one. My gosh, babe. Are you good? I can't wait to use the audio. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Will here from All Electric.